Miss Smith says her fiance keeps turning up in states they don't live in and shacking up with women he's not engaged to. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Hello, everyone. You may be seated. The case of Smith v. Suddeth. Thank you, Ms. Smith and Mr. Suddeth. It's a pleasure to have you here in Divorce Court, and welcome, everyone, to this session of Divorce Court. This couple has been together for two years. They've been engaged for a year, but it's my understanding, Ms. Smith, that you are facing a crossroads and you are making a decision as to whether or not this is the man for you. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me why we were in court today. Well, we're here today because my fiancé is a liar and he's sneaky and he's a cheater and I'm not going to marry him without knowing the truth. And if it comes back that these things are true, I'm walking out of here today, ending it, and I'm done. No, no marriage and no relationship. Sounds like a trifecta mm -hmm. of deceit, if yeah. it's all true. Am I yes, correct? Yeah. Oh, Lord. That sounds like a lot, Mr. Suddeth. Yes, ma'am. What do you say, sir? Well, ma'am, I'm here today to save my engagement. I love Donette. She knows this. I've proved myself time and time again. And after this lie detector test, I'm going to deserve a lot more respect than I've been getting. All right, so you say you are ready to put your uh, fidelity on the line to show that you are not a liar or deceitful? That is correct. And that this is the relationship for you, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, I want you to take me back, Ms. Smith. Take me back to the time when you first met and then what brought you to a point where you're in divorce court? So we met through my sister. Uh, I was going through an ugly divorce <laughs> and she had introduced me to him, and he had that whole bad boy vibe, that whole, you know, sexy swag. So, of course, it grabbed my attention. It was supposed to have just started out as sex. <laughs> I mean, it was just going to be what it was, and it developed into a relationship of lovers. And then, once we got engaged, that changed. We started fighting all the time. His anger issues, you can't argue with him. His anger is just, it just rages. So, there's no arguing. Um, and, Your Honor, quite frankly, I've been married twice before that failed, and th third time's the charm is what they say, and I want it to be a charm. So if he fails this lie detector's test today, I'm done. You know, Miss Smith, it seems as if you all started off that this was just some friends with benefits, that you were getting over a bad relationship, and you were just about to have some fun. Yeah. It developed into something more. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Suddeth, is that the way you saw the relationship? Yes, ma'am. And tell me about the beginning of it. Were you happy? And then what ultimately changed, sir? Well, ma'am, in the beginning when we first met, Donette was always there for me. She helped me find little pieces of myself, you know, because I do have anger issues and I do shut down from people. And she helped me realize, you know, that you don't really have to, to focus on what other people think. You can just be happy and you can be loved. Why are you so angry? What makes you mad? What's the problem? Uh, ma'am, I was in the military for a long time. And I have... You're a uh, veteran? Yes, ma'am. I served okay. two tours in Iraq. So I want to thank you on behalf of a grateful nation for your work on behalf of the United States of America. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And I understand that a number of our veterans came back from that experience with um, some PTSD and some uh, maladjustment back into society because we don't often support our veterans in the manner in which we should. Is that what you've been experiencing? Yes, ma'am. So, have you tried to get any help in that regard? I have in the past, but they always want you on medication, this and that, you know, and I, I'm more, I feel like my mentality, I can handle myself without that. But we know that you can't because if Ms. Smith is saying that the anger issues manifest themselves, so you're going to have to figure out how to balance not self-medicating but still treating the illness. Um, have you tried therapy? No, ma'am. So, I know a lot of people, especially men with swagger, okay, <laughs> they think that they're too cool for the school. And therapy yeah. is a good way to help you deal with some of the issues and help you manage, especially if you don't want well, Your Honor, can I give deal. you an epi like? Can I give you an example? Yes, ma'am. I would like to so, know. So, my sister had called one night. It was around three in the morning. So it was, you know, in the morning. She had called to wake me up because there was an emergency with my nephew. Okay. And when she did, of course, the bed, the phone is by the bed. So I'm on the phone with her. She's concerned about my nephew, and it wakes Andy up. So Andy wakes up, and he doesn't like to be woke up. 
you don't wake the sleeping bear, you know? So he wakes up and automatically in a fit of rage, as soon as he wakes up, instead of asking me, oh, what's going on? Is there anything I can do to help? No, it's straight yanking my phone, throwing it across the room. And then whenever I stand up to say something and I'm like, you need to stop or even try to calm him down, he does not do that. He takes the phone and throws it across the room. It breaks the TV. I have evidence, Your Honor. You submitted evidence? I did. May I see the evidence? That's the TV. Oh, that with all of those squiggly lines mean that... You can see where he hit it at the bottom with yes. the phone. And that was my phone where my sister called me. And that's, it doesn't stop there. So it progressed, and whenever I was trying to get him to calm down, he put his head through the bathroom door. And I have evidence of that also. Let me see the evidence. Yeah. Okay, then that was made from and him That was made kidding. from his head. Okay, now, Mr. Suttoth, I know that <laughs> you may have suffered from P PTSD, but, sweetheart, you're gonna suffer from a concussion in a yes, minute. Yes, ma'am, this story, there's, there's a lot of underlying issues with this story. What you is know, it? Uh, well, for one, we've had a lot of trust issues in the past. Okay. As far as, you know, from our past experiences with people. So, to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and see her just, you know, whoop do -whoop whatever on her phone, sent me into a, uh, you know, a little bit of a rage because I automatically assume she's on there and she's being, you know... Sneaky. She's the one being sneaky. It went from him saying, you know, F you this and F you that to, well, that's okay because I don't want to touch you anyway. You got a loose kitty. And I'm like, mm, well, it's funny because the one before you didn't think it and the one after you sure won't either, okay? Uh -huh. And it's not even just that. His words cut deep and he doesn't... Well, uh, I guarantee you... Being told you have a loose kitty is deep, okay? Yes. <laughs>my question, Mr. Suttoth, because it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I can imagine sleeping, I don't know if you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, belly sleeper, but being awakened and realizing that your partner is having either a text conversation or a phone conversation. That's right. Why isn't your first question, who are you talking to, babe? Well, because I figured I knew what was going on already. <laughs> but you didn't. I didn't know, but I mean... You know, so you assume it's something. To ask for forgiveness and permission, you know. It's not better to ask for forgiveness when you're trying to get with a woman that you want to make your wife, because at some point she will say, "No, you are not forgiven." You're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and at some point she will have a right to say, mm, "Don't want to deal with that." And then it also makes your partner afraid that they yes, can't you know, trust. I'm not trying to justify the fact that I woke up and I maybe you know over. No, no. Did it. Take it. Take take complete accountability. Saying... You overdid it, <laughs> mm -hmm. sir. Right. I just saw a hole in a wall made by your head. I just saw a television that cost some money, broken and damaged. So... Oh, and he didn't replace those. He didn't replace those, no. So, Mr. Suttoth, I'm going back to you. You have to take some accountability. Yes, that That's on you, sir. You're you right. know? Oh, Your Honor, yes, it gets better. I've got There's more? Story. There's more. There's more, yes. Oh, There's dear you know. Lord. Yes. Yeah, There's yeah. more. So Andy has this thing, his words, words have no meaning to him. So he will, anytime we argue or have a disagreement, no matter how petty it is, it's always, the first thing is F you. That's his favorite thing to say. But then it goes into, well, how can I degrade her? How can I make her feel less than? So there was this one day, it was a petty argument. It went from him saying, you know, F you this and F you that to, well, that's okay. Cause I don't want to touch you anyway. You got a loose kitty. A loose kitty. And I'm like, mm, well, it's funny because the one before you didn't think it and the one after you sure won't either. Okay? And it's not even just that. His words cut deep and he doesn't... Well, uh, I guarantee you being told you have a loose kitty is deep. Okay? Yes. <laughs> yes, but yet yeah, he wants me in his own demented way. He wants me to come and show him he's wrong. I'm showing you I nothing. have to shut her down. Like, I'm sure... I'm sure everyone understands how women like to feel... Watch yourself. <laughs> uh, okay. Watch yourself. Okay, in certain, in certain Cause you about, yep, because you're about to step in some like complete People to show caca. some kind of seniority or superior over somebody, right? Why? She, she is the most independent woman I know. Okay? I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go back to why, why you say mean stuff. That's all I want to so know. This is what I'm getting at. She gets right up in my face like a grown man. You know, you ain't this, you ain't that, blah, blah, blah. They're basically pushing me to the point of, like... So are you telling me you she know, gives as good as she gets? Yeah, she does. Do you agree with that, Miss Smith? Uh, sometimes, yes. Okay, so something tells me that the two of you need to learn how to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. Cuz I cannot 
tell you a time that my husband has ever spoke to me in a disrespectful manner, ever. Right. So yeah. I would assume you want that in your life, Miss Smith, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. By the same token, you can't treat him like a piece of you know what. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can My can't. reactions is usually after he starts and then I let it get to me. So the two of you have, th have to learn how to communicate. That is clearly one of the issues is that you all don't have a communication style that is conducive to a real relationship. It feels more like a competition most of the time. Yeah, like you already pointed out at me. Somebody got to show who's superior. How about we're partners? We want to make a life together. What about that? Well, I'd love to make a life with him, but he's sneaky. So I can tell you stories about the sneaky part of his life. She thinks I'm unfaithful and I'm untrustworthy, which is a lie. Well, you've slept with... I want no, no. Don't say no. no. What, we, well, we, we're the clear at show. He's a cheater. He's that's the what one I want to know. With other women, how do you know he slept with other women? That's because there I were pictures in his phone. What's going on? I have a business account with our cell phones on it. I get on there and check because I don't trust him. And there were messages from his ex. Oh, so you were being sneaky to find out if he was being sneaky. That's exactly I was. What she was doing, but, yes. Okay, so <laughs> let me finish though. Hear me out. It's so interesting but, that people don't want to take accountability for their own stuff. No, well, I mean, I paid the phone bill, on. but here's the thing. <laughs> well, why but she's here's telling the thing. all these stories, I got one too. Okay, I'm going to get to you. Go but ahead. But here's the thing. So instead of using his actual phone, he will get the text apps where he can sneak so there's nothing on his phone. So he's calling and texting through text apps that you download onto your phone. He's never taken phone calls around me. He gets up and he leaves the room. And then whenever I do find stuff on his phone and it's from his ex, he's going to say, oh, she just needed somebody to talk to. Well, I'm, I'm going to come over to you, Mr. Sutter. Yes, ma'am. Because you wanted to say something. As far as the phone goes, she does have me on her account. She, she put me on there, which it was a blessing to me at first, you know, because I was having a little bit of a hard time. But then she's getting a hold of any number I text or call. She even called my boss one time. She About what? Boss, she texts my boss trying to figure out what the number was, who I was talking to. So my boss, when I show up to work, he's like, hey, I got a text from your girlfriend wanting to know who I was. And it was kind of inappropriate. No, okay, no. so I'm did like, Did you text the man's boss? What's going on? That's a lie. No, I did not. I That's will take lie. the lie detector's test to prove that. So wait, so you, you... I didn't text. I called the number and it was a voicemail. That's how I knew it was his boss. And I hung up. I'm the one that told him I'm the, I, that I called and it was his boss. And I apologized because I was wrong. Why don't you trust each other? What has happened? Well, I personally well, came from a previous marriage that was mm. left in shambles. And uh, if I see any of those characteristics in another person, regardless of giving someone a chance, I automatically associate it with what I've already been through. And if you show those types of signs to me, I'm going to be looking for those types of signs. And if it looks that way, then that's just what it is. So here's my problem with that. I think that every relationship, you bring a little bit of baggage from your previous mm -hmm. relationship. I think we all can't agree with that. But you can't bring a whole match set of luggage. You see what I'm saying? Right. You can't roll up in there with a trunk, with some wheels on it, carry-on piece, the check baggage. You can't have all that because nobody wants to be in a relationship with somebody that keeps nagging at them about what happened in their previous relationship. Right. right. No one wants that. Well, and there's more, Your Honor. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, there, there's more. So we were in a... He asked to be in our family circle on Life 360. So one night he leaves and says he'll be back in a little while. Well, a couple hours go by, I don't hear from him. I start calling, I start texting, no response. So I pull up his location and guess what? It's off. I have evidence of that also. And I don't hear from him. Ooh, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, and he thinks he can hide. Like, you can't hide that. Why'd you turn it off, you know? So then... Why did he turn it off? Your Honor, my phone died. If you, put your, <laughs> if you put your phone, if you put your phone on battery saver or anything like that, if you have Life 360, you know it automatically cuts your location off. There's no way around that whatsoever for anybody. Were you somewhere you weren't supposed to be? No, ma'am. No, I have I have friends. Never. I grew up in I grew up in the town close to where we live, so I have friends all over the place. Why does she think that you are out here catting around and cheating? What has happened? Because that's what she's used to. I'm the only good man she's ever had. <laughs> Well, and she does what the same association you... that I do with me that, I, that I've been guilty of doing with her because she thinks I'm unfaithful and I'm untrustworthy, which is a lie. Well, you've slept a... 
I want no, no. Don't say no. no. What have we? Well, we we're clear one, at church. So he's a cheating. He's a cheater. He's that's the what one I want to know. With other women, how do you know he slept with other women? Because that's there were pictures know. in his phone. Oh. So Andy went to truck driving school to get his CDL. It was a far. It was far from home. So they put you in. It's like a so many week class, and they put you in housing, like a little okay. dormitory. Yes, mm -hmm. but it was an apartment. He had a, it was like a townhouse thing, and he only had to share a room with one other guy. So Andy had me thinking. He's in this schooling program. He's doing so good. He had me thinking he was going to bed at eight o'clock, getting plenty of rest. Well, guess what? I he was going to bed at eight o'clock, but he wasn't getting no he rest. He wasn't getting no rest. Your Honor, I graduated. I graduated from that school with a 97.6. I did very well. Wait, I'm so congratulations. And I did, no. I did excuse me. I was excuse me. To. I don't think she said you were stupid. <laughs> I don't think she said you didn't do what you were supposed to at the trucking school. I want to know about the cheating allegations. Yeah. So hold on one it's minute. It's the truck driving school. That's where I was getting at. So okay. yes, it wasn't too much longer. I get a message from a girl on Messenger. And she says, hey, I just wanted you to know that I'm in truck driving school with Andy and he's been staying with me. She's like, he was in the spare bedroom until Thursday when I finally gave in and we slept together. And I have evidence of that also. This is the conversation between him and her. I need glasses for this. He tells her, I care I about you. I care about you. you. I yeah. miss you. You really don't give a uh, about me. You made that very clear, Andy. Ooh, she called him by his government name. Uh-huh. I do give a blah about you. I wish you'd stop saying that. I really do want to be a part of your life. Okay, you are caught, sir. I'm not necessarily. <laughs> I, I can explain this, too. I want to hear it. Okay, at the truck driving school, they assign... Everybody comes from all over the country to yes. go to school or whatever, okay? So they put you in houses in these apartments. Yes. It's basically, to me, was a halfway house. I'm in a room with three other guys. I don't know them from Adam. I don't want to stay there. It's uncomfortable. Suck so there's up, a little young, young, young girl in my class, about 24 <laughs> years old. I find out she has an apartment because she's from this town. Okay, mm -hmm. it has an extra room. So I chop it up with her and... You know, I make my, I make it to where I can get up in there and stay, right? Yeah, so get I up do, in there. Because it's a more comfortable situation for me. I don't want to stay around a bunch of men because I have anger issues, I have this and that, and that don't, didn't need to stem out. Did you have this conversation with your fiance? No. 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 You'd have been staying with the little young girl that you was chopping it up with then, and you'd have had to stay your little tail there for the rest of your life. Because guess what? You don't move in with another young woman when you are engaged to this woman without doing her the courtesy of letting her know and finding out if she has a problem with that. And then you put the two women together so that this woman knows that it is nothing going on. Okay? That's it. Yo, yeah, that girl's lying. I did not have sex with that girl. I don't know if she told the truth. I don't know if you're telling the truth. But what I know for certain is, if you hadn't been living in her house, she wouldn't have had the ability to hurt your fiancé. You gave her that. You, right. you got a little too comfortable and that opened up that door. I did. That girl, though, she's lying, I'm telling you. That's why I Did you hear what today. Corey said? You got comfortable. I did, I know. Yeah. And that's not all. There's more. There cannot be more. There, oh, there's more. There's more. Next time on Divorce Court. He was gone for two months total, and I started talking to him again. Why? And he told me, because I love him. Where Maybe is was, Tina Turner right now? What's love oh. got to do with it? Girl, what in the world? When he came back home, well, there were pictures of him and his ex laying in a hotel bed naked. And you know what he tells me? We didn't sleep together. Well, there may not have been a lot of sleeping going on. I was drinking too much. And you know how that goes. I couldn't perform if I wanted to. I need these results because yeah, I Yeah, you need you. these results. We asked Mr. Sutter, while attending trucking school, did you have any sexual contact with the woman that you stayed with? Correct. And what was Mr. Suttoth's answer? Mr. Suttoth answered no. And what did the test results indicate? The polygraph examination results indicated... Do you like seeing me this way? Do you like seeing me hurt? Made.